The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Newey Scruggs. All right, here we are, another edition of the Players' Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com, right here on DallasCowboys.com. Radio, I'm Newey Scruggs, longtime Cowboys reporter, joined by... The Toledo Rocket himself, he is Barry Church, Danny McCray with another day off. Church, how we doing, man? I'm doing great, man. And if you can see there, I was repping Danny, Team Danny, man, and, and Survivor. I had the shirt up for the for the people out there, man. Season 41. Um, you know, hey, I was shouting out to my boy, man. He had a heck of a game. Heck of a game. I'm extremely impressed with how he played that game. And I'm sure we'll dive into it a lot tomorrow when he returns. But, um, man, it was a heck of a game. I'm proud of my boy out there. I've never watched the, the show Survivor, so the first 40 seasons, I've never checked it out <laughs> since season 41. I was there for you. And uh, I could see why people enjoy it. It did become addictive to watch. You were, you did find yourself rooting per, for personalities, and I did not think Danny was going home. I thought it would be Deshaun who got got, but thus, that is the game. But Danny... Uh, Danny left, and, and he left in a good position, man. You know, I don't think anybody had any hatred or malice toward Danny. He played a good game, man. So uh, we'll dive into it tomorrow, and um, you know, good on him to, to live out one of his reality dreams. I mean, to be able to be on that show and go compete and, and go as far as he did and last as long as he did and represent himself, man, I'm happy for him all day long, man. That's good stuff. Yeah, without a doubt, and, and real quick, real quick, one, they made a mistake not getting rid of Ricard last week. That man's going to mess around and win the whole thing because can't nobody beat him in immunity. So that's one. We'll dive into this tomorrow. But two, man, I, my boy hit him with the go Cowboys and a wink. I said, oh, man, what are we doing out here, man? What, what's going on? I but it. I loved it. I, you you, you got to love it. You, you got to love it because you know he's putting on he's putting on for the boys out there, man. And just the, the way they edited it and how they set it up, man, it was a – it was a good uh, salute. Like, I'm going to see y'all later, man. So I'm going to definitely give him a little bit for that tomorrow. But oh, like you man. said, man, the guy played a heck of a game. Couldn't be more proud of the boy. I, I tweeted it out there, man. I loved it. I loved it. Because somebody on Twitter was like, this is the worst part. This is the worst part of ever of Survivor. I was like, I loved it. Remember some cowboy guy? hater. It was yes, some exactly. cowboy hater out there. Exactly. And somebody else was like, well, I prefer to think of him as a Chicago Bear. I'm like, okay, okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> but good stuff there. Hey, uh, how about Mike McCarthy today? Mark McCarthy mm. making a little news on social media and, and people running up the headlines of what he said. Now, okay. I'm going to let you hear what Mike McCarthy said about going up to Washington this week for the Cowboys and whether or not, in your mind, this is bulletin board material. Chris Bean, play the cut from Mike McCarthy from today's press conference with the, with the Dallas-Fort Worth meeting. We know what people think of us. We love that. Uh, we're comfortable who we are, where we are. Uh, but I'm excited about what's in front of us because you know we, we, you know we're, we're going to win this game. Um, I'm confident in that, and just the, you know the prep that's going into it. Uh, but you know more importantly, we're going to you know we want to improve too along the way. So I think that's all part about what the challenge of December football gives you. All right, uh, I couldn't really hear it very well, Chris, but Mike McCarthy, and I just wrote down some of what he says, we are going to Washington to win. We are going to win this game. I'm confident in that. That's the major portion of what people are talking about on social media. And when Mike says it and you hear it, it's not Jimmy Johnson's proclamation, we will win the ball game, put it in three-inch bowl letters, like he said to Randy Galloway back in the 90s. But here's Mike McCarthy saying, we're going here to win, and we're going to win this football game. That's what we're going to go do. I had no issues with it. Church, you played this football. You played the game of football. You're safety in the league for the Cowboys and the Jaguars. Tell me how you took it. If if I'm more, if I'm a Cowboys player, like if I'm one of those guys in the locker room going to practice each and every day, put my heart on the line for the team, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Like if I'm a boys player, I'm loving it because you love to hear as a player, you love to hear your coach 
have that much confidence in you guys. And when he goes out there and says, you know what, we're going to go win this game. We're going up there to play the game and we're going to win the game. It means that he has confidence in all three levels of the game. He feels like his team is better, whether it's talent wise, coaching wise, execution wise, whatever the case may be. He feels confident enough to say, you know what, we're going to go up there and win the game because it, it can backfire. It can backfire immensely if they go up there and get beat down or even lose a close game. It could backfire a lot. So if I'm a, if I'm a player for the Dallas Cowboys, I'm like, all right, I got to make my coach right now. That means I got to lock in. I got to go up there and I got to put my A game on because if we lose, not only does it embarrass us as players, but it embarrasses our coach as well. And he put all this confidence in into us thinking we can go up there and get the dub and basically seal up the division. So if I'm a Cowboys player, I love it. If I'm Washington, if I'm a part of that football team over there, I'm using this as billboard material. This to me is like one of them Nick Sirianni beat Dallas Cowboys shirts he had on earlier in the season. I'm, I'm using that as billboard material. I'm saying, look, this coach is coming up here into your house thinking that y'all don't even stand a chance. Today is what? Today's Thursday. So the game's about three, four days away. And he's already saying that they're going to whoop on y'all. No matter what y'all got going on, no matter how many wins y'all done had these past couple games, he don't care nothing about that. He don't care nothing about the momentum y'all got or how good y'all playing as a team. He says no matter what y'all do, come Sunday, y'all going to take this L. So if I'm Ron Rivera, that's what I'm preaching to these players. I'm saying, look, man, these Cowboys, they say they run a division. They've been winning games all season. Now you got the coach up there talking about they're going to go up there and win the game. They, he, If I'm Ron Rivera, I'm like, man, look, you would have thought they had the win streak going on. Like, they didn't just lose two or five games or two out of – well, they won two out of seven games these past couple – past couple games. So if I'm Ron, I'm using it as billboard material. But if I'm a Cowboys player, I'm loving it. I just got to know my coach, hey, I got to have you back because if we lose, it's going to make us both look foolish. All right, so – is this a situation in your mind where Mike McCarthy puts added pressure on the players to say, hey, look, we're going to win this game. I'm putting it on you to win this game. I know we're going to win this game. You're going to have the game plan to go out here to execute, to go win in Washington. I think a part of that's what Mike McCarthy is doing here, and I like that. Put it on these guys. Yeah. Go win this game. I'm with you on that. I like it, too. Like I said, if I was a boys player, I'd like it. Um, but there definitely is added pressure. There's definitely added pressure. When you go into a rival situation, you go to a divisional opponent, you know they know you like the back of their hands. They play you twice a year, home and away, like just like you play them twice a year, home and away. So they know all your tendencies, your strengths, your weaknesses. These are teams that, that know you better than any other team in the National Football League. So to go up there Thursday afternoon and say, we're going to win come Sunday already? I mean, that puts a lot of pressure on, on that staff to make sure they got a game plan that they know they can go out there and succeed in. And then it puts a lot of pressure on your players going out there knowing they got to dominate this team. They got to go out there with their A game, knowing that their coach put that much faith in them. They put he put it out there in the media already. So to me, you got to come with it, because if you don't, uh, it could backfire immensely. And it's a lot of pressure on you to get this dub now that your coach opened his mouth and said what he had to say. But. I circle back to the beginning. If I'm a player, I love it because I know my coach has confidence in me and he's not shying away from anything. So I love it going up there. And I still got the Cowboys winning regardless. So I don't see it's a bad play by uh, Colt McCarthy at all. Let's really concentrate zero in on the next three football games for the Cowboys. Because in a whole lot of ways, these next three games, can you can pretty much wrap up this division. Because yeah. they've got a two-game lead. You're at Washington. And then after that, you come home to Jerry World to face the Giants and then the day after Christmas on NBC it is, it's it's Washington and Dallas at it one more time so you're going to face them two out of the next three weeks man, you get you get game, you get this game, you get the Giants game you're really in the driver's seat to, to go ahead and wrap this thing up so I like the fact that he put pressure on him to say look, let's just go out of the gate and knock these dudes out of the box Okay, let's just yeah. end this thing, let's end this thing go ahead, let them know, we're the kings of the east go handle your business up there Vegas got him as a five-point favorite. Um, so I like that part of it. And I'm going to flip this other side of this. Barry, you, and Danny have been talking about the run game and wanting Kellen Moore to call more runs. There is an issue with the run game. Tony Pollard, has he sprained his foot on that 58-yard touchdown against New Orleans. So he's hoping to play on Sunday. Uh, was working out with Britt Brown a little bit before practice. It was open to the uh, media session. And then uh, Zeke Elliott was on the bike for a bit before he went over there. Zeke says he's going to play in the football game. But you have two running backs now who have injuries that they're dealing with. 
a knee injury for Zeke, sprained foot issue for Tony Pollard. What's your thoughts here? That 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 makes me nervous. That that I'm not gonna lie to you, Newly. That that scares me just a little bit because we know Tony Pollard as a back. He's a one cut electric juice. Like he just brings that 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 speed, that that just violence to the game where he's taking off. He's either if he's not hitting a hole, he's bouncing outside and taking off. So I'm not quite sure how bad that foot is sprained, but it's got to be able to affect his game. It has to because he's a speed back. He relies on his speed. It's not like he's, you know, the bus or, or Zeke out here where it's just three yards in a cloud of dust and he's just grinding and grinding until maybe he pops one. This is a guy who is a home run threat when he touches the ball at any given moment. And that's the strength of his game. That's what makes defensive coordinators worry about when he touches the ball. And if that's and if that in any way is compromised by this foot injury, I think it slows him down and I think it slows his effectiveness. Now, to me, if Zeke was healthy, I'd be like, ah, oh, well, you know, Pollard, you know, take the week off. You know, we get Clement to come in here and do a couple third down package situations. But then Zeke is injured as well. And we all saw last week against the Saints how bad he looked. I mean, he looked like he was limping out there. He was dragging a tr- Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it was it was it was it was it was troubling to watch, man. This is just yeah. not the player that you've come to expect. Um, when you're watching Cowboys football last week, the Zeke Elliott just no. It wasn't the 21 we're used to. You're not. It wasn't. It wasn't the 21 you're used to. He wasn't grinding people down. And for the first time, I think I mentioned this uh, earlier in the week, but it was the first time we saw him just run out of bounds. There was no like, all right, I'm gonna put my foot in the ground. I'm gonna put some punishment on these people before I go down. It was like, you know what? I'm out. I'm tapping out. I'm going straight out of bounds. So, and to me, you you know already how I feel about this run game. You know I feel like that's when we're at our best, when we're at our peak, when we got a balanced attack, run and pass. And if we're out there stagnant in the run game, we got to rely strictly on the pass or we're one-dimensional, I think that's why we've been struggling a little bit offensively these past couple games. And I don't want Washington to go ahead and take advantage of it because even though they don't have Chase Young, even though they don't have uh, Sweat, who's in the uh, COVID protocol, this team can still get after the passer. I mean, they're loaded with first-round draft picks on the defensive line. And if you're telling them that their run, the, our run game is, is compromised and we're not able to move the football running the ball, then they get to pin their ears back and get after Dak Prescott. And we've seen this offensive line show some chinks in its armor. So it makes me a little bit nervous. I still have the Cowboys getting this victory because they do have an awesome trio of receivers on the outside. But overall, not having a great run game with two injured backs, it makes me a little bit nervous. So, so you're saying that the receivers need to run the routes and be where they're supposed to be the way the owners <laughs> think that they work? <laughs> yeah, I'm with Jerry on that one. They, they need to get their route running, get some separation, and give Pat Prescott an opportunity to throw the ball in there. <laughs> Ooh, child, I'd love to be in a receiver room after that stuff came out later on that day. Ooh, like, what, what do you say, Nui, as a coach? Like, if you're the, if you're the coach, I'm forgetting his name right now, but the head Jones. receiver – Adam Jones, if you're Adam Jones and you're in the meeting room, you know these receivers have heard this. You know they've heard what's going on around the Metroplex, Jerry Jones show, and he's talking about the receivers. What do you tell them? Like, what do you tell the receivers at that point? Um, how many of you all free agents? If you're a free agent, raise your hand. And there's a whole, <laughs> lot, of, there's a whole lot of hands going up in that room. Uh, if you got no more guarantees on the contract, raise your hand. Amari Cooper hand go up here. So, uh, look, there's, there, there's some guys in that room. You may not have liked what the owner said, but he's writing the checks, and he's going to be determining the fate of some of these guys because number four is not going anywhere. Okay? We know no. this. No. So, so when he spoke, it's, it's truly one of those where you have to listen to what Jerry Jones says. And yeah. the fact that he doesn't say it very often I think means something. I, I literally would just be, okay, okay, he's, he's saying something, and you have every opportunity now to go out here and show what you can do. If you don't yeah. like it, you've got five football games to go out here and change the narrative and show Jerry that you think he's wrong. That's the beauty of this, man. That is the yeah. absolute beauty of Sunday, 1 p.m. in Landover, Maryland at FedEx Field, these guys could change whatever narrative Jerry Jones has thought about them. I agree. And and New, I'm, I'm gonna ask you this question. Do you think it's it's I mean, I know it's not all on the receivers, but do you think the majority of it is on the receivers? I mean, we've seen CD Lamb out here, he's been playing fantastic. Amari Cooper, when he's healthy, he's been actually been able to uh be a little bit productive there. And then we saw Gallup come back from his injury and do a couple things here and there. Do you think it's the majority of the receivers, or, or would you give it a 50-50 balance with, with Dak right there? Man, I, I just think so many – this th- these past few games, you know, you talk about the loss – go back to Denver, 
Okay, those okay. are basically the losses to these AFC West teams. You start looking at those, and there was a lot of perfect storm there of you know Denver wanting it more, playing better, Kansas City understanding what to do, having the win to go their way. Where Dak could hit Gallup on that first on that first shot down the field, which it should have gone a long way. I mean, this in the injuries and then the COVIDs and coaches being missed. There's just a lot of stuff over these yeah. past four or five football games that just. Look, man, it just wasn't good. So you can point to the receivers and say, okay, you're a part of this issue. But you can point to the offensive line and say, you're a part of this issue. You can point to Dak Prescott and say, you're a part of this issue. So all along the way, during these these tough games, and even a win against New Orleans, which wasn't 100% crisp, you can look at guys and just say, uh, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. So I just think it's it's a bit much to just put it all on the receivers. But I go back into the question that was asked by Sean and RJ on 105 through the fan to Jerry when they were asking if something's wrong with Dak. Because Dak Prescott's last three football games, or I should say, since Dak's come back from the calf injury, he's not looked as good as he did beforehand. That's a fact. And so yeah. when and Jerry trying to answer the question, he basically put it on his receivers and didn't put it on the quarterback. And I don't know if that's necessarily a hundred percent fair because we all have eyes and we can all see. Dak Prescott has not been the same quarterback since he came off the calf injury, and there's yeah. nothing wrong. There's you know there's nothing wrong with saying it. There's nothing wrong with saying you know what man uh, was on that leg that he had repaired, and you know we, we're we're still at times trying to figure out where where is he at. Now Dak is going to be like you and a lot of these other guys who've played for the Cowboys. You're not trying to tell everybody what's going on. You're going to tell everybody yeah. you're all good. You're ready to go. Just because you tell it, I've learned in these press conferences, just because you say it doesn't make it so. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. I mean, it doesn't he's, make it so. He said he was fine. <laughs> that, do, that doesn't make it so. That's just what he said. And and the premise of, well, you're trying to take guys at their word. Uh, this is a gladiator sport. Gladiators don't come out here and do that. Uh, before I fight, let me list down these 10 injuries I've got right here. <laughs> just to let you know, okay? So if something happens, you can point to one of these 10 things that are wrong with me. And, I mean, that's just, that's just not what guys do. That's not what yeah. guys do. And, unfortunately, many times fans believe exactly what they hear. Oh, Amari Cooper said he's fine, he's good to go. Well, he's not really good to go. And you don't no, know that he's no, taking no. a shot over here. And, and you don't know what the effects are from COVID. And, and, and guys aren't going to come out after him. Hey, man, I've been wheezing and coughing all week long. Can't smell a whole much. And I went out here, man, I three plays, I was gas. You know, you, you're just not going to see that. <laughs> yeah. Or or you're not going to see many guys do it. Luka Doncic admitted this week when he said he had a shake. You know, you got to be better at it. Ooh. You know, they came and said, look at that cane of camp. Well, weighing over 260. So. Ooh, and you can see it, too. You can see it all in his face and neck. I'm like, oh, Luca, what, what are you doing, baby? What you doing? Right. But for him to even just come on out and just admit it, you know, like, okay, that's that's rare. That's rare. Yeah. You know, some James Harden like, didn't do it. No, he did not. No, no, he, he did not. He, hey, man, I tried to get out of town, so I decided to go ahead and make it a Krispy Kreme type two weeks for myself. Yeah, he didn't come out and say that. But that's what he did. That's what he yep, did. Exactly what he did. So so you're not going to see Dak Prescott come out here saying, hey, man, you know what? This has hurt me now. That is. It's preventing me from doing that. You're just not going to get that from guys. They're going to nah. pretty much tell you they're ready to go. But just because they said it doesn't make it so. And I can't stress this enough. And Barry, you can tell people more about this. It's December. Nobody's Ooh, yeah. Nobody's it's 100%, December. man. It's December. Your body's aching. You know, good thing for the Cowboys. They play in the dome and all that good stuff. But, I mean, December, that's when you start to get out of the bed. And you're like, man, I got to do this again? And it might not even be that hard of a practice. You might be just in helmets. But your body's just, especially when you get older and older in the league, when December comes around, that's why they say if you can get a win in December, it, it doesn't matter. If it's good, ugly, bad, whatever the, the, the case may be, if you can get a win in December, it's always good because your body starts to ache, your body starts to fail you. And then the, then the NFL decided to add another game onto yeah. the regular season. So these guys are going to be aching here for the next couple weeks, especially when the playoff run comes around. And I just think it comes down to who's the healthiest team. And right now, the Cowboys, they got some reinforcements coming along. And hopefully this offense can uh, shake back into gear these next five weeks before this run starts. All right, let's take a break. I want to get into Trayvon Diggs versus Terry McLaurin and how that matchup can play out as the Cowboys get ready to go to Landover, Maryland to face the Washington football team. This is the Players' Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com on DallasCowboys.com Radio. 
At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go. <laughs> and if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem like me. Not available in every state based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates Northbrook, Illinois. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Back to the Players' Lounge. Get the gift of the Cowboys this season with the Dallas Cowboys United membership presented by Globe Life. It is the ultimate fan experience for the ultimate Dallas Cowboys fan. Membership start at just $20 and include an exclusive fan pack and VIP member ex- uh, experiences. Tis the season. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash United to get yours today. I'm Louis Scruggs. Joined by Barry Church, former Dallas Cowboys safety. This is the Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. Danny McCray will join us tomorrow. All right, Cowboys in first place got a two-game lead. Washington needs this football game. It is at home. This is your first meeting in the next three weeks against the Cowboys. So it's Washington and uh, Dallas this week up there. Next week, it is Giants-Cowboys, followed by Washington coming to Jerry World December 26th for NBC's Sunday Night Football. The Cowboys can basically go ahead right now, in my opinion, and put this thing to bed if they can win against the Washington football team this Sunday, and then follow that up with a win over the Giants. This is the Cowboys' opportunity to go ahead and make some hay and, in my opinion, knock them out of the box. Now, if you're Washington, what you're going to try and do, obviously, run the football, but when you throw it, you want to find number 17, Terry McLaurin. Scary Terry is what they call him up there. Trayvon Diggs <laughs> right now, nine interceptions. He is on his way to a all-pro season, okay? Let me sure I say it one more time. All-pro season. And yes, sir. Uh, and Dan Quinn, I imagine Dan Quinn just says, okay, travel with him all day long. And if Taylor Heineke wants to take a try and test digs, feel free, go ahead. I like this matchup for the Cowboys. Yeah, I'm with you on that too, Nui. I, I love this matchup for the Cowboys. I think Diggs has the advantage. Um, one, because, you know, they, he has uh, Heineke back there throwing him the football. And what we know about Heineke is he, he's a gunslinger, has that gunslinger mentality. He likes to take chances. So a lot of those balls we've seen McLaurin catch these past couple weeks have been 50-50 balls. Like Heineke's literally running running around, running around. Oh, there's, there's 17. There's Scary Terry. Let me throw the ball up. And he's won the majority of these 50-50 balls. But when you're going against a guy like Trayvon Diggs, who has some receiver background and has probably, arguably, the best hands for a defensive back in the National Football League, those 50-50 balls start to become 75-25 balls in favor of Diggs. So to me, I love this matchup. I love the length that uh, Diggs has against a fast guy like Terry McLaurin. I feel like he's going to be able to get up on a line of scrimmage, 
get his hands on him. He's going to be able to throw that timing off, that chemistry between McClory, uh, McLaurin and um, Heineke out there. But overall, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one for people to keep their eyes on because McLaurin is one of the better route runners in the National Football League. He has that go juice, that gas where he can run by everybody on the field. And he has a quarterback there who's not afraid to throw the ball up to him. So this will be a good matchup. McLaurin, these past couple years, has become that not as quite as devastating as Deshaun Jackson, but he's also had a couple of great games against these Cowboys. So he's creeping into that kind of Cowboy killer realm right now. So it should be a great matchup. But like I said, Nui, I'm favoring Diggs. I love the length. I love his hands and his ball skills up there. And I feel like those 50-50 balls will be his for the majority part of this game. I just don't want to see... Anthony Brown on him. Not, no disrespect to Anthony Brown. Like he's had a, a great season so far this year, except for two games. But I just feel like the matchup between McLaurin or yeah, yeah, McLaurin and Diggs favors the Cowboys rather than Anthony Brown and McLaurin. I just feel like that'd be a matchup in favor of the uh, Washington football team. So I'm in favor of it. Let's hope that Diggs travels with them and locks this guy down. All right, we just had somebody comment right here on the feed. They said all pro question mark. Yes. Oh, Trevon yes. Diggs. Trayvon Diggs is an all-pro. He's got nine interceptions leading the league. I'm going to I am going to say he'll get one more and have ten. There's no way in the world a guy's gonna have ten picks in the National Football League. And he's there's not only, all pro. It's just there's like, only one thing, Louis, I'm gonna say. There's only one thing. Cause they have do they have like is the nickel back its own all pro position or they just go to the top three corners? Good question. I'm not sure. It's a good question. Because if they do like a nickel was its own separate and they have just two spots for outside corners, I mean, yeah, he has nine picks. Are you going to throw him over a Jalen Ramsey? Yes. Okay. Okay. What about a yes. JC? Ja- I mean, JC Jackson's right there in interceptions and he's also been not just, not just giving up as many yards. So I can see the argument, but I'm with you. I mean, I think he definitely deserves to be an all pro first team all all pro because he has nine interceptions with five games left. So he's probably going to squeeze out maybe two or three more. So you're looking at a guy with 11 to 12 interceptions. You, you got to throw him on there. But I can see the argument of, of other guys saying, well, there's a Ramsey, there's a J.C. Jackson out there. But if you're going just top three corners, it, there's no way there's, that he's not in the top three. I mean, the guy's had too special of a season. Yeah, that, you know, you got, you've seen the pick sixes, and, and he's one to get. He's going to be in the spotlight down the stretch here. And I, I'm still believing the Arizona and – Dallas game is going to get flexed. Chris Beam doesn't think so, but I think we're going to see the Cowboys on NBC in back-to-back weeks. I think we're going to see him the day after Christmas, and we'll see him against Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. But I just I believe Diggs is going to get another pick, and I just don't see any way a Dallas Cowboy cornerback with 10 picks is not going to be on the all-pro team. He's had that kind of season. He really has. He's had that kind of impactful season. And right now, when we look at the Cowboys – the defense is playing better than the offense. And if the defense carries his team down the stretch here, he's going to be the person who gets the most accolades for the performance of what's going on here. And Micah Parsons is playing some outstanding football, but I don't know if Micah Parsons will make the all-pro team. But what Diggs is doing at a corner and the way you identify it, the way they select them, interceptions matter. He's going to be there. I, yeah, I just truly you know. Oh, I completely agree with you. I think he'll be in there. And another point on that Arizona game is – Hopefully we get this matchup because it'll further solidify, you know, him being an all pro. But if he's able to go out there and shadow DeAndre Hopkins. Now, I don't know if he'll be playing or not because they might have the number one seed sewn up by then. Who knows? But if they have that matchup out there on prime time and they flex that game and he goes out there and, and, and locks him up or does, gets a pick or does something great against DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, that right there to me. He's going against a top three, maybe even a top receiver in the National Football League. If he's able to go out there, and lock him down. And it's on prime time, and it's against the one, the two of the best teams in the national or in the NFC. I gotta say, I mean that that solidifies it for me if he's well, able to do that. Okay, and I'll say this: Does he need to have that kind of performance against Hopkins, considering what he did against Jefferson in Minnesota mm, on Thanksgiving yeah, he Day? Put the clamps on him. He held him to two catches in that football game. I, I mean, you know, and that defense only allowed one touchdown. And and when Thielen caught it, um, I don't think that was against him at all. But uh, I look at the body of work of what he's done already, and and it's it's when you talk about all pro core and what you want right now, that that's he's it. He he he's, he he's done his part, and I know last year when we were talking about the Cowboys after the season and looking at the draft, and we said this is a team devoid of blue chip players. 
And, and it, that was a fact at the time. There were no yeah. blue chip players on the football team. And you look at the Cowboys now, they have two blue chip players. Diggs at corner, and then you got Micah Parsons over there at the linebacker spot. You know, those are two blue chip players that you have on your on your football team. So I expect him to get the, the accolades. You know, we know Pro Bowl for sure, okay? We already know that. But the all pro is when you just say, hey, who are the best corners in the whole league? You're gonna select two guys. Um, he's there. In yeah. my opinion, he is there. And now you got five you got five games to go with the ability to, to solidify it even more. But what we saw him do early on in the season and how where the Cowboys were playing. And look, you look at the Saints game here. That that pick he had, I mean the Saints were they they were driving. I mean, they were in the football game, okay? The, oh, yeah. the Cowboys won it, but the Saints were in that football game. And here he is making another key play. So the picks he's making, these aren't those garbage picks. You know, no. this isn't, hey, man, the end of the half, you know, he just happened to catch. No, this guy's making impact picks, changing the football game, running picks back. Um, yes, he is an all-pro football player. And I'm telling you, man, he's on his way to a second contract. I do want to say this about Anthony Brown, about let's say you wanted to put him on Terry McLaurin. Okay. If you did it, give him some help. Give him some help. You got to. That's it. You got to. Put two, put, make it two, two, double coverage on McLaurin. Whether it's like you said, whether it's you know him pressing and you got a safety over the top, or he's playing off and you got a linebacker buzzing underneath him to take away those short to intermediate routes. If you do have him, if you don't want to, you know, because if you if you're traveling, if you're traveling with Diggs, and let's just say they put McLaurin in motion and all this other stuff, it's gonna it's gonna basically get give your disguise up. You're gonna know if they're in man to man or if they're in zone. So if, let's just say Quinn wants to keep the integrity of his defense. He wants to keep that disguise alive. And they might end up having Brown on McLaurin at that time. You got to have safety help over top. Maybe a couple times here and there, you let him go one on one. But for the most part, I'm not letting Heineke key on Anthony Brown with him one on one with him McLaurin. I'm putting the safety help over the top, whether it's KZ, whether it's um, Curse buzzing underneath, or whatever the case may be. If you want to remain the integrity of your defense and keep that disguise alive, give my man help over there. Just don't set him up for failure. So I agree with you on that point. But for the most part. If, I, if it's me, if I'm the DC, I'm putting I'm putting uh, digs on him. I'm saying, hey man, go do what you got to do, earn that second contract. You're already on your way. Go ahead and lock this guy down as well. How do you feel about KZ right about now? Um, right now, I'm I'm kind of disappointed, and I, and I say that because we know like his past with Atlanta. When he's healthy, he was one of the most ball hawking safeties there was. I mean, he had ten picks one year, and then I think he backdoored that and followed it up with another year with six interceptions. So. I know he has that ability to be that whole safety, that deep part of the field safety, that Earl Thomas that can roam back and forth. But when I watch the tape and I watch these games, I feel as though his angles to the football, whether it's breaking out of the deep middle or coming down to try to make a tackle, their angles just not have been there. I mean, we looked at that New England game. He was the last line of defense back there. If it was me, you you, you should have went to the body of the receiver and knocked it up. But he ran right past it. And I'm talking about when Kevin uh, Byrne, I think his name is, Caught the, caught the pass for 85 yards on a touchdown in that New England game. There's just multiple instances of that where he's at the middle of the field and his angles to the ball just aren't where they need to be, and he's giving up a lot of big plays. So right now I say I'm a little bit disappointed in KZ's game because I thought he would come in here and be one of that ball hawking safety, that Earl Thomas safety when we're talking about Dan Quinn's defense. But his angles just have been a little bit off this year. Hey, look, the past four or five games uh, have not been the best football uh, of Demonte KZ's uh, career, so there's a lot of guys who, who who need to really put together a good five games as they get ready to head into this off season because they'll be free agents. KZ signed a one year deal, so this this is really it. This is a big push for a whole lot of guys. I mean, there's a, I mean, you start to think about this now. There's a lot of guys who are trying to solidify their position, be it with the Dallas Cowboys or somewhere else in the league next year, and consistently we see. Teams like to sign players off playoff teams. So mm. you want to make the playoffs and go fur- further in the playoffs because it just helps you. I mean, really, who wants to go outside a bunch of losers? You know, oh, that no. team was won two games last year. You know, you, know, you, ain't put like, you ain't trying to sign a bunch of Jets after the season. You know, you're trying no. to find guys <laughs> who got out here and played some winning football and bring them into your program. And so that that kind of one year, you think about Keanu Neal on a one-year deal, Malik Hooker's on a one-year deal. Um Michael Curse. Gallup is up after the season. Curse is up after the season. So there's a lot of guys we're seeing here who who are, are looking for that next. 
Lake Banderesh. Okay, his contract's up. It's starting. It's starting to remind me of that 2016 year, that rookie year with Dak and, and Zeke. And you know, we went on that run. We went to the playoffs. We had a really good team that year. And after that, after that season, I mean, teams came and picked it apart. I mean, they basically blew up the secondary. I went to Jacksonville. I think Claiborne went to the Jets. B. Carr went to Baltimore. We had some other guys in the linebacker situation that went other places. I mean, when you have a good team and you got so many people on their last year or one-year deals, these teams around the league, they're, they're scouting it. They're looking at you as well like, man, I bet you that guy can do great for our organization. So they're going to pick and part. This team wants the uh, once the season's over, and it's up to these guys to either solidify your resume, to solidify your spot with the Cowboys, or at least put it out there to where another team will want to come up and grab you and give you a nice chunk of change. All right, we've got to take one more break here. Based on that, I want to ask you a question out of the break, Barry, based mm-hmm. on how, how you approach that final year knowing you are up and how other guys who are in the same position you're in right now, how they go about these final five games. Let's dive into that next. He's Barry Church. I'm Louis Scruggs. This is the Player Slash brought to you by Hotels.com on DallasCowboys.com radio. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go. <laughs> and if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem like me. Not available in every state based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Back Back to the Players' Lounge. Registration for Holiday Youth Camps is now open. Don't miss the Dallas Cowboys Football Academy and Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders Dance Academy Camps on December 21st at the Star in Frisco and December 22nd at AT AT&T Stadium. Space is limited, so register today at DallasCowboys.com slash Academy. You are the Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com. I'm Newey Scruggs, on time Cowboys reporter, joined by Barry Church, former Dallas Cowboys safety. So, Barry, want to take you back in kind of how we were talking about the last conversation. So, you were there. You talked about how the, you guys had that great year, 2016, 13 and three. Team uh, teams good. And everybody comes for the free agent players. Got a bunch of Cowboy players whose their contracts are coming up here, or you know they the Cowboys could exercise their uh, ability to walk away from their contract here. When you're in that kind of situation, what is December like for you? To me, it, it was the final push. Like I, I knew, I knew I had this, you know, feeling in the back of my head that, you know, I wasn't going to be back with the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, I think they had a lot of different places they had to put their money. They didn't have a lot of cap, whatever excuses they want to give. But I knew I wasn't going to be back here. So to me, the final push. I had to get good tape on there. I had to make sure that I wasn't giving up busted coverages or I wasn't getting beaten man to man. I was doing all my jobs and all my responsibilities and helping this team win because I knew if I was able to do that, 
I don't care what team I went to, I was going to the highest bidder. And, <laughs> and I, I'll definitely I'll definitely tell you this. You know, the grass is not always greener on the other side and these other organizations. I feel like the Dallas Cowboys, and not just because I played here, but they have a top-notch organization. They 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 treat the players right, and you're not gonna you're not gonna basically make as much as you do off the field with the Cowboys with other teams, but if you're in a situation where this is your first time to really get the bag, to really get as much money as you can, then you got to go for it, whether that's with the Cowboys or not. Because, you know, what this league stands for, the NFL, not for long. I mean, you got you to gotta maximize on your opportunities to make as much money as you can in this short period amount of time. And that was my thought process. I knew I wasn't going to come here to Dallas, so got to good, put good tape on there. And hopefully some teams will come give me a nice chunk of change um, for my services. And that's what I was able to do. I went to Jacksonville. Played there for the contract and then I retired. But for me, uh, when you're thinking about free agency and you're thinking about what do I need to do, make sure you handle your business on the field first. You know, don't get too far ahead. Don't be thinking, okay, well, I've got this. I did this. Maybe this team will holler at me or maybe I'll fit good with that team. Don't worry about none of that until the season is over. Make sure you keep your eyes focused on what you got to do, and that's put good tape on the field. Win, lose, or draw, make sure you're handling your responsibilities on the field. You're not giving up big busted coverages or plays like that because that's the quickest way for you not to get paid in the offseason. So you just got to focus on what you got to do, and hopefully it comes out on top. But if you start thinking about you know maybe this team or maybe that situation, it'll uh, take away your focus on the field and you end up playing bad and then you won't, you won't get paid at all. So to me, focus on the field first, worry about the contract and all that other type of situations once the season's done. A lot of stuff to play for here in December. December football games are just different, folks. It's just different and obviously livelihoods are at stake as well for players but also on the coaching side. A lot of rumors start getting that put out here yeah. around right now. Uh, George Edwards, Cowboys uh uh, assist, defensive assistant um, who spends a lot of time with the linebackers. He is up for the head football uh, coaching job at, at Duke. So he's Huge. a former, former player, so his name is there. Uh, former Cowboy head coach Jason Garrett, his name is up there uh, at Duke JG. University. And the defensive coordinator over at Texas A&M, Mike Elko, his name is up there as well. So, right, so, so, these are some of the guys that are they're there. Tony Elliott is not going to – he was up for the Duke job, but he's going to take the Virginia job here. So um, it looks like th- th- there may be uh, a hope for George Edwards to, to get the job here. But it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Um, it's, going, it's going to be tough, it's good, especially with JG's name in the hat. I mean, you, you're going to a school, and it, 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 Duke may not be Ivy level, but it's one of those, you know, prestigious, you know, college universities where academics is definitely key. Um, when you're going into that school, yeah. so you know ah, JG. Stop it! And you know JG, he has that Ivy League, that stop. Princeton. I mean, I'm just saying, it. it's a match made in heaven. That's all I'm saying. No, Louis. that's it. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. So, so let me just start ripping it off from the top. Number one, he's never coached in college. Okay, never okay. coached in college. And today's co- today's college football is a whole nother beast. In fact. You've got college coaches trying to run out of college because of this whole NIL deal. There's a lot of the day, hey, man, I got to recruit them. Now I got to help them get paid, too. And I step <laughs> in the door. They want to know, OK, what what you got for me? Because the last coaches came up here. This is what they're going to give me. I mean, so so this whole NIL deal is a different beast. And if you haven't been in it, it is hard. And you talk about Jason Garrett coming in here to coach and learning rules. I remember when I worked over at US, uh, when I worked in L.A. and I covered USC. They brought Paul Hackett in from from the NFL. And Paul hadn't been a college coach. There were many things he didn't know what to do. He didn't know, okay, late, late game situation. SC gets a first down. He calls a timeout to stop clock. They're like, what are you doing? The clock automatically yeah. stops in college football. So there were a lot of things he just didn't know. And along the way, the way he treated the players, I mean, he just, it just wasn't a good fit. It was a terrible fit. But when I look at Jason Garrett, and I just say to myself, if you're, if you're Duke University, Mike Elko, Makes a lot of sense because he already coached at Wake Forest and helped Wake Forest build the program that they have today where they played for the ACC championship. He's a heck of a good defensive coordinator. But Wake Forest, when you talk about the academics and you talk about a small football school, it's really the same. And to me, if I'm Duke University, I'm looking over Wake 
to the east of me and I'm saying, I mean, to the west of me and I'm saying, okay, that's what I'm trying to build. I want that kind of program. Why not go get somebody that truly has an understanding of how to go do that, who's been recruiting, who can, oh, by the way, in a place like Duke, you got to go try to really get across the nation to get some kids because you got to have such a high academic standard to recruit them. But Mike's already been down here in Texas. He knows where Texas talent is. And then, plus, he's already been in the ACC. So to me, if you're Duke, you go there. Not some guy from the NFL who's just leaving a think, job, a losing a job, where everybody said he was predictable calling plays. You don't think JG can go down there and get some of them top recruits? You don't think JG would be one of them good recruiters down there getting everybody? Hey, come to this Duke University. We'll get you right. I got the NFL experience, head coaching experience. Stop. You don't think he'd be a good fit down there? You okay. I mean, I know they say okay. his I'm, offense I'm, is predictable. They say that, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay. Maybe if you get some players around him, he can I'll do get, some work out there. Okay, I'm just going to give you an example. How, how, how's that working out for Herm Edwards at Arizona State right now? Uh, Herm, Herm's a defensive guy, though. Herm's oh, okay. defense a guy, man. Okay, how's it, how's it working out for that guy who went from New England, uh, from Bill Belichick staff over there to, to uh, Arizona? How's that working out there? Arizona's uh, terrible. Terrible. Uh, it's <laughs> terrible. How about Charlie Wise, but, huh? But they're not JG, though. They're not JG. I'm telling you, he can turn that thing around. He can turn that organization, that that university around. Uh, And it um, wasn't too far far gone where they were in the ACC championship. I think when Daniel Jones was there, they were up there. So uh, it ain't too far gone. And I think JG can bring those those recruits in there as well. So JG got my. He got my support, man. He got me. Dude, college college recruiting is Hard. I mean, it I'm t- is. I'm t- I was I was over the TCU campus the other day and, and was talking with the dean of the School of Business. And he's been working with the AD about just NIL and how they're trying to figure out, hey, how do we work this thing? This is a whole situation that people on these colleges are trying to figure out here. So you're going to bring a guy who hasn't done any recruiting and now he's, hey, do you know what NIL is? Do you know? I mean, that's, that, that to me, that's a tough ask. And if, I'm Duke, and if I'm Duke University, I'm going to hire somebody who's already un, in an understanding of what to do. And plus, I can't emphasize this enough, man. There's You can't recruit everybody there, church. Because yeah, of tough, the, ac- because, the academic standards right. are so high out there. You, you're not going to get your five star, but he has a, you know, 2.3 GPA in high school. It's not it ain't going to work out that way. This is right. This is a tough deal. That's why I said a guy like Elko, who's at Wake Forest, they already knew, hey, there's only a certain kind of kid that we could bring in. Uh, you know, Will McClay, the Cowboys, Will went to he went to Rice University, and Will can tell you when uh, when um, my old buddy David Bailiff was coaching down there at Rice. David Bailiff used to tell me, he said, Nui, I lose more kids to the oil and gas industry than I do to the NFL draft. <laughs> because they're smart and they go on these yeah. internships and, and he says we just recruit a different type of kid they're just kids we can't even we, we don't even bother to knock on their door yeah. so I, I just think that they, they, they'd be better off finding somebody who has a better understanding of what to do there alright Barry Church good stuff tomorrow Danny McCray will join us be back here and uh, we will review with him and now he can tell us all about uh, yes. Sur- Survivor yeah. He can finally it, tell us the little ins and outs about yes. Survivor and what he didn't like and how the, the how Jeff really is as a person, the host. I can't wait. I can't wait, man. It's going to be a fun show. All right, Chris Bean, we appreciate you hooking us up here. We will do it tomorrow right here, same time, 12.30 p.m. on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!